Suddenly, HIMARS, H-I-M-A-R-S, is all the news in India. And this is now supposed to be the new weapon that the United States has given to Ukraine, with which Ukraine is smashing up the uh, areas occupied by Russia. In a previous hangout, we had talked about Kherson and how Ukraine was within touching distance of Kherson. And if they reoccupy Kherson, then a whole lot of things are going to change for the worse for Russia. So today's news that Putin has fired uh, Dmitry Rogozin, who is the head of Russia's space agency, Roscosmos, should come as no surprise. As a matter of fact, before we go even further, I want to expand a little bit on who Rogozin is and what he was also doing. He was the head of this secret company that manufactures CPUs called as L. Bruce, E-L-B-R-U-S. You can see here that is the chip and I've got a picture of that. Now, L. Bruce is the equivalent of what I would call as an Intel, uh, you know, Pentium series kind of a processor. The Russians have been using this in their advanced equipment. And the reason this is important is this chip, it was promised by Rogozin, I believe, to Putin, and I've got all the references to prove this. So don't give me crap about, you know, Russia having everything. They don't. This is why they have actually fired this guy. It is believed that he was telling Putin that it is being manufactured in Russia and everything is hunky-dory. But today there is news now. I guess they finally caught up to the reality that these chips were actually being uh, fabricated in TSMC and now with the embargo in place, they cannot get these chips anymore. So all the advanced equipment that Russia uses will not be able to get these chips. These chips are very important because you can run Windows apps on this chip. So it's a dual thing. I mean, you want to run a Windows application, you can use that to run on this chip. Also, whatever this plan programming they did was on this chip so that all their advanced equipment, such as the S400, can run on this. So not having this chip is a body blow for Russia. I'm telling you again and again, this is a huge deal, huge deal. Whether <laughs> now Rogozin is going to be asked to go and fight the war in Ukraine, we don't know. But what we do know is thus far, 12 generals, 12 Russian generals have died in this conflict. They don't call it a conflict. They call it something else. That's okay. That's for the Russian people's consumption. We know that this is essentially a Russia war on Ukraine. So now the other question people keep asking is, is the S-400, how does the S-400 compare against the high Mars? Well, you can't really compare the two because the S-400 is a surface to air missile. The closest that I can think of is the Patriot on the US side. However, Patriot doesn't have all the features of S-400. You need to augment Patriot with some other things. But the United States felt pretty comfortable that with the other stuff that they have, that they can match or better S-400. So these are what is called as surface to air missiles. Now, the HIMARS, on the other hand, is a surface to surface missile. Now. Uh, Russia has the equivalent, they call them SS-1, 2, 3, all the way up to 10. And 10, they even claim that they can load an ICBM. Clearly, there's a problem here because Ukraine, with just eight HIMARS, they are wreaking havoc when they are going back to recapture some of the lost cities. Uh, the, like I said, Kherson is the next one, and they may uh, mount a huge... Uh, counterattack there to get back that town. Because if, it, if they get that town, remember I told you this, the Ukrainians believe that they can cut Russia off from Crimea. And if that were to happen, that is really bad news because they thought that they already got Crimea in 2014. The Russians thought they were going to get the Donbass region and even that will start falling. So what is Ukraine looking for? They are looking for longer range HIMARS so that they can finish this once and for all. But we don't know if US is going to give them that or not. Because remember that Biden would like to keep this thing going for as long as possible, as closer to 
November as possible because the United States voters mindset is if some president starts a war, they would like to see that person finish it. So he may be using that as his last Trump card to come back to retain majorities in the uh, Congress and Senate. We don't know, but that's that's one of the strategies that he might be doing. Also, there is another type of missiles called cruise missiles. These missiles can be fired from the ship or from the air. And so then they give you a lot more flexibility. And the United States has something called a Stomahawk and the Russians have what is called a Scalibur without the E, K-A-L-I-B-R. Now, news is filtering in that Russia is completely or almost completely out of the calibers. So again, there is a mismatch. Again, this is something that we have some data and i'm going to put that data as part of references so you feel free to go take a look at that a lot of stuff happening i hope this explains to you that you can't really compare an s400 with a high mars it's not an apples for apples comparison i've given you the head-to-head -head, uh, missiles that each, each of these countries have even though ukraine is fighting the war it's, it's really u.s technology because u.s technology is also nato technology you get the point right so I hope you like this presentation and you can show your appreciation by clicking on the super thanks button and donating and also don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Please also click on the bell button for notifications. Thank you very much. Namaskar.